sports. Now, the Kenya national rugby women's team, the Lionesses, will miss the Dubai Sevens Women Invitational Tournament for the first time since making their debut in the 2009 season. Despite being in training for over 10 weeks, the Kenya Rugby Union failed to confirm their participation on time and are yet to give an official communication to explain why. But as Lynn Washira reports, reliable sources have disclosed to KTN News that the required participation fee was not paid on time. In the competition so far? The Kenya Lioness is the second best of women rugby team in Africa behind the South African outfit who won the 2017 Africa Rugby Trophy as Kenya settled for second place to earn an automatic qualification to the 2018 Commonwealth Games. <laughs> With a limited number of women rugby tournaments, the Dubai Women Invitational Tournament and the Hong Kong Sevens Tournament form part of premier women tournaments. The Leonesses have been training for over 10 weeks in preparation for the Dubai tournament. <laughs> Just a week and a half ago, I caught up with the team during one of their early morning training sessions. They were upbeat and full of expectations. They were aiming for the big trophy in a tournament they have never missed since the year 2009. The team is in Dubai, but we are aiming for the finals. We are aiming for the finals, at least we are number one. We are aiming for the The team is in a very high spirit and we believe going to Dubai we are going to clean the trophy. Actually, we've been knocking to the doors in Dubai, like um, we've been runners up like twice. And this time around, with the games we played, actually, because here Peter to put your mileage in the Commonwealth Games. Last time around, we, we dropped out in the semis. We want to go a step further, get into the final. And once we in the final, we want to, to, to give it our all and see if we can win it. But that bubble has been burst even before the tournament kicks off this coming week. The Leonesses will unfortunately miss out on Dubai 7s this coming Saturday due to what the union term as a technicality issue that saw them fail to confirm the team's participation on time. Sources close to the union, however, revealed that the Leonesses' participation was jeopardized after the union failed to pay the required participation fee of 5,100 dirhams, an equivalent of 130,000 Kenya shillings. The union has not revealed the technicality issue that brought about the delay in the confirmation. In terms of finances, the union is in partnership with sports betting company Sport Pesa, who sponsor all the national teams. How then does the union decide which team participates in the tournament and which team is sacrificed owing to financial constraints? <laughs> On Friday, the National Sevens men team that will represent Kenya in Dubai was named, but there was no word about the Lionesses. The tradition has seen both teams get named on the same day. But is missing just one tournament a big deal for the team? Well, the Leonesses have not taken part in any tournament since the Africa rugby participation. It's also one of only two tournaments they would test their strengths at ahead of the Commonwealth Games where they will make a debut. With lack of the much-needed exposure, the women rugby team will continue playing catch-up. As the men national team, the Shuja, depart for Dubai Monday, the Leonesses have put training on hold. They will follow the tournament from home before regrouping with hopes that perhaps the next tournament, Hong Kong Sevens, will bring them better tidings. Lin Washira, Checkpoint. Right, and we want to pick up from Lynn Washir's exclusive report on what's going on with the rugby team. That's the Lionesses that will not be traveling to Dubai tomorrow. Our sources have revealed that the women's team's participation fee was not paid. But let's speak to the person in charge of rugby in this country, and that's the chairperson of the Kenya Rugby Union, Richard Omuela, who now joins me on phone. Richard, good evening, and thank you for speaking with us on Checkpoint tonight. Why Thank aren't you. the Lionesses going to Dubai tomorrow? I think there's a wrong perception that it's an issue of registration. Mm -hmm. uh, for the women to participate in Dubai, it's not an automatic slot for them. It's normally by invitation. When you get the invitation, you then look at uh, the resources that you have to be able to participate in that tournament. So the perception that uh, we did not register them for the tournament is a wrong perception. So... Let's get that clarified. That is not an issue of our failing to register. I mean, 5,000 dirhams for the union is not, 
It's not an amount that I would, I would say is insurmountable. So let's not uh, cheat ourselves. That's not the issue. The issue is whether we had the resources capable of taking the Lionesses into Dubai for the tournament. Uh, right. We have always done that, and we will always try to support the Lionesses wherever possible. All right, so you say resources are an issue, but resources. yet at the same time, the 130,000 participation fee isn't a big figure? Uh, which is it? It's, it? I mean, when you talk about going to participate, uh, Yvonne, we, we have to talk, uh, talk about the air tickets because being an invitational tournament, you have to pay the air tickets, you have to pay your own accommodation, you have to pay the ground transport. For us, it was coming to about $30,000, uh, an amount that we don't have at the moment to spend on that tournament. But, Richard, this amount of money was available for the Shujas. That's the men's rugby team. Yes, there's a difference, uh, Yvonne. Uh, the men's team is sponsored by Sport Pesa, and the men's team is also sponsored by World Rugby. Don't forget that uh, being a core team, they're actually sponsored by World Rugby. All right, Richard, but Sport Pesa, as you say, is the main sponsor. And from our understanding of the arrangement they have with the Kenya Rugby Union, they sponsor all national teams. So wouldn't that apply to the men's national team and the women's national team as well? Not in equal measure, Yvonne. I mean, the Why not in equal measure, Richard? Because their the main focus was to get into the HSBC World Rugby Series, which is the men's tournament and not... Part why they came in as part of special sponsorship for the women uh, is to see whether we can continue to support the women. But uh, their key focus was on the men's rugby. So are you saying then that the women's team isn't a national team because you say the sponsorship was on the men's? From uh, our understanding, it's all national teams. That would be uh, the sevens, the fifteens, the men and the women. If, Yvonne, I've not even said anything about the women's team not being a national team. We all know it's a national team. And but the sponsorship forget, is for national teams. No. Sponsorship particularly targets the men's seventh team. Let's not run away from that responsibility. All right. But um, then there's the issue of how this was communicated and that it hasn't officially been communicated to the women's team who've been training very hard for the Dubai Sevens, but aren't being given official communication as to why they're not going? It may have been a communication issue. As I said, this tournament is an invitational tournament. As soon as uh, the information comes in, we look at resources to see, are we able to get to the team to Dubai, or are we not able to? If there's a miscommunication, then that is something that... Uh, our team has to look at in terms of why wasn't it communicated in time. Do not forget that the team has just returned from Tunisia where they were going to qualification in terms of the Commonwealth and the World Cup, and they have qualified for the Commonwealth, and we need to see how best can we support them in going into the Commonwealth Games. All right, so you do admit that there was a communication failure and that the women's team who've been training for a long time for this um, we're certainly not the first to know about this decision to not take them to Dubai. I'm saying that maybe there was a communication issue in, in communicating with them in terms of whether they are going or not going. But in terms of whether we were able to go, I'm telling you for free that uh, without government support, there's no way we would have taken the team to Dubai. All right, but there seems to be um, the feeling that uh, women's rugby isn't treated as seriously as the men's. And I'll, I'll tell you why, Richard. I mean, uh, the men's team, for example, have been in a residential build-up high-altitude training in Nanyuki. The women didn't go for that. Um, in fact, it is our understanding here on Checkpoint that the women themselves do not always have access to the training grounds, that's the RFUEA grounds, um, and that they always have to look for alternative grounds and that perhaps there should be a lot more focus on bringing up the sport for women, but it seems like it isn't equal for both the men and the women's rugby in this country. Yvonne, absolutely agreed. It's not something that uh, I can run away from. Look at any, any rugby club in this country. Do they have women changing rooms, for example? It's something that we need to address as a nation and not as an association. Uh, for example, go to Harley Queens, go to Impala, and find out do they actually have women changing rooms so that we have training for women there. That's why we, 
we focus and take the women to a different facility where they can have those those facilities for them to change and be able to play the game. And whose responsibility is that, sir? Partly the government. Why is the government funding Nayo Stadium, Kasarani Stadium and other stadiums and not rugby stadium? All right, thank you for speaking with us. Um, so can you confirm that they are indeed not going, even as the men leave tomorrow? I can confirm that we are not able to support the women to go this time around, but we are looking at taking them to Hong Kong, where we are able to uh, mobilize finances for them to participate in Hong Kong service. Thank you, Richard Omwela, who's the Kenya Rugby Union Chair, speaking to us um, and indeed confirming that the Lionesses, that's the Kenya women's rugby team, will not be travelling to the Dubai Sevens team tomorrow, even as the men's team jets off to that country tomorrow morning right here on Checkpoint. Thanks for speaking with us.